If you know anything about the Revolutionary War in America, or have seen the musical Hamilton, you'll know that the British were the first to really colonize the east coast of America, after the Spaniards and the displacement of Native Americans. Not one of the proud moments in American history we like to talk about, unlike when we won our independence from England, which now we love to sing about. The world turned upside down. So it's really no surprise that England and America still share a lot of similarities. Enjoyment of afternoon caffeine, an obsession with royal weddings, Game of Thrones, and even our currency. Today's element is copper, so naturally, I wanna talk about the penny. Funny enough though, Americans have been minting pennies since 1793, Whereas the British only started minting their current penny in 1971. The coins are both about the same size and they're both made mostly of copper. Oh, except in 1943 and 44, pennies in America were made of steel because copper was needed for war materials. The current British penny, like a surprising amount of other currency, has Queen Elizabeth II on its face. She has been on currency in 35 different countries that is crazy. Whereas our current penny has our beloved 16th president of the United States on it, Abraham Lincoln. But it wasn't always that way. From 1793 to 1857, the penny or large cent as it was called because it was the size of a half dollar, it was pretty much pure copper. And it had all sorts of ladies on the front of the coin depending on the year. There was the flowing hair scent, the liberty cap scent, matron head, draped bust, braided hair, and, and a couple more maybe. And then in 1857, the penny was made smaller to about what it is now, but with a flying eagle design on the front. After this design proved to uh, create some issues with production, in 1859, the flying eagle design was replaced with the Indian head scent. This penny was 88% copper from 1859 to 1864, and then from then to the end of its production, the coin was 95% copper. And then 1909 was the start of the Lincoln scent as we know it today. Sort of. For all those years, uh, except for the steel penny years I mentioned before, the Lincoln penny was 95% copper. But compare that to now, and pennies are only copper plated, meaning they're 97.5% zinc and only 2.5% copper. And this makes total sense. If it were the other way around, pennies would be worth one cent at face value, one penny, but two cents in terms of their copper value. Even still, pennies are more expensive to produce than what they're worth, and there's this entire coalition out there that I found in America to retire the penny. I don't know if this is going to go over too well though. Granted, the $2 bill was successfully retired and the British retired their half penny or half pence, is that how you say it? Half pence in 1984. But this year, the British government suggested getting rid of the one to two pence coins, stating that most are only ever used once and the rest of the time they get lost in the laundry or down sofa cushions. But there was quite a backlash and the nation was heard, so the penny will continue to exist, at least for now, in England. That's today's episode, everyone. Thank you for watching, as always. Coin Week continues tomorrow as we revisit the classic treasure, gold. Element a day in May.